My name is Ethan Pettigrew and I'm Unangach uh, by birth. I'm adopted by Shlinkets. I was born and raised in Wrangell and my family is from Nikolsky and Athka. I am uh, currently living and working in Anchorage and I'm the uh, ex executive director for Cook and the Native Head Start. Our, our mission is building strong foundations with Alaska Native families through Alaska Native cultures and education. We feel strongly that our cultures and education, our value systems have been left out. I'll just be honest, we've struggled with Western education for a couple hundred years, well, at least a hundred since Americanization has happened here. We're Alaska's first people, yet we're the last in so many ways. We've been disconnected from who we are, and we've been taught shame, uh, and we want that all to change for our young people. We want that pain to go away. We want um, our young people to be immersed and proud of who they are so that they can flourish. So what we've done is we've created a curriculum that is uh, all of our activities are all done in a, uh, with a native perspective. Our Ursia, she's like our elder, our school elder, she, kept saying that she needs more classrooms and I'm the grant writer. So I had to go find her more classrooms. And we, um, at our first site, couldn't expand on it. We said, hey, wouldn't it be great to get a, a property and to try something new from the beginning? And it's got uh, this thought of indigenizing everything in there as much as possible in a modern way. We took it to the board, the board was, yes, let's go for it. And so I got some money to build us a new building. When we got to this stage of, uh, let's do a building, this has got to be different. But how do we make it as traditional looking as possible? I, I think you could say it started with a cup of coffee. I met with a gentleman from the Alaska Native Heritage Center and he said, oh, hey, hey, you want to integrate culture into things which is what we like to do, at Kaufman Engineers. And he's like, you should talk to Cook and the Native Head Start. I got back to my desk and I had a voicemail from Ember. And they were like, hey, um, how much do you think a new building would cost? <laughs> we wanted it to look like a, a kayak, like a traditional community building. The design of the building is indigenous from the beginning. They sat us down in uh, a room and they threw out uh, tons of imagery on a table, a large table. There was probably 12 of us native people. And they said, now I want you guys to pick five images that are important to you. And then we threw them into a pile. They came back again later. Here's, here's the possibilities for all your color patterns. Here's your uh, patterns in your carpets. Everything in here has indigenous uh, inspiration. The vision of Cook and Native Head Start from the beginning was, was solid. The vision was very powerful to create a haven and like a supportive and healing environment for teaching Alaska Native kids and, and families. I know we have to have chairs and I know we have to have tables and walls and windows and heat, but how can we make it look as traditional as possible? The design of the classrooms are really unique, I think, because we know we live in two worlds. So you'll see the classroom, there's an outer part of it, it's modern. But if you look at the center of the classroom, it's done like many of our traditional houses were constructed. There is a fire pit in the middle of the floor, and then we have a smoke hole. Our teachers no longer will do calendar time against the wall or story time. They're expected to do all their class group gatherings in the center of the classroom, which is our traditional space where we learn. The playground is designed around the idea of camps. The idea is that they can teach on the playground traditionally, as well as just play if they want to go climb a whale or climb a, a, a house. But it gives the teachers an opportunity to tell stories um, from their past, to keep the tradition going, and to keep the culture exposed and not hidden. There's some stereotypical things that happen in Western architecture that have become symbolic of colonialism, of control. And one of them is the long straight hallway with doors off the sides. By curving the building, we, we eliminated that. You have this sort of gentle leading arc that you walk through when you come to the classroom instead of this long straight thing. We also have items like our grass baskets that 
people ask why we don't have them behind glass and it's because we want them to smell. I mean, you can smell the grass and it like, takes you back to grandma. <laughs> there were some challenges that the design team and the, the contractor went through that was our job to keep their vision and to keep their goals in check. Uh, my compliments to them is they are able to bridge uh, the gap between uh, those of us that see things in a very traditional way. They've been able to help us work through that uh, process and to be able to modify things uh, so that it does meet those codes, yet uh, suffices and does what we want it to as well. It's a, a more relaxed environment for us. I, I know this is not all me, but I'm part of this. I can walk from this world and go into the next now knowing that I did something positive for my people and for our children. There really isn't a place that the, the Alaska Native people can do this. And, and this does it. You know, they see something that's from their culture, they connect with it, and when you have your culture in your foundational years, you can take that with you for the rest of your life. We had done the grand opening and uh, kids were clamoring and playing on the playground and you know, there was music playing and kids were just all over the place. And there were adults all over the playground and we were standing out there visiting and um, I get a tap on my shoulder and I turn around and it's this elderly lady and she's crying. She has tears coming down her eyes. And uh, I said, are you okay? She goes, yeah, yeah. She goes, I want to ask, are you responsible for this? And I said, no. I said, I'm just one, one player in it. And, and she started to cry a little bit harder and I put my hand on her shoulder. I said, are you okay? She goes, yeah. She goes, I'm really happy actually. She turned and she pointed to her grandkids, two, one boy and one girl, they were on the sod house. And she goes, I never thought I'd see the day when it's okay for my grandkids to be native. I gave her a hug. Uh, that's the biggest compliment I've had to me. To me, that means there's hope. And we can get rid of all the pain that we have as uh, indigenous people. I don't know, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like this is the end. I, <laughs> I hope this lights a fire for the future. I hope to see a, a radical change, a, a systemic change in education. It's, it's a beautiful space, and it's a beautiful space to learn our culture in. And it's a beautiful space to learn Western education in. I guess we're going to prove that we can do both. As Native people, we can succeed in this and uh, we can put our children in a better place in the future.